All right, so we have a we have a son that we've adopted here at Harbin Town. I like to think so. His name is Spencer. He's our dungeon master. He's our he's our he's our he's our he's our, he's our boy, but you know he has a real father, as well, who is here tonight. And I, I was hoping he could come up and we could have a little chat with him. Andy, can you are you willing to come up? This is Spencer's dad. Grab, yeah. The father of our dungeon master, Spencer Crittenden. Andy Crittenden, everybody. So you are, you are the creator of the creator of, of worlds. Oh, yes, I, uh, I did create him with a load. As you so <laughs> and, uh, World's grossest callback. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it amazing how little men have to endure at the actual inception? You know, like that. Yeah. It's so funny because, like, what, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not so funny. That's a certainly not new territory to, to, to tread, but it's like, but, but how much more seriously we take it. Uh, I, I, and I don't, I, don't think, I don't think we shouldn't take it seriously. I, I, I find, I think that, like, especially when I started getting into Joseph Campbell and stuff, like, like the, the theme that kept flying off of these pages to me was like, oh, we have lost the father-son axis. We have, we have lost this, this, this power. That, 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 because, like, if a, if a father loves his son, or fuck loves, like, if a father and son respect each other, that, that like, line of power like, that you see in Star Wars and stuff, even when the dad is a piece of shit the the it, it's so much more powerful than any system uh, 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 and and i think that i don't i don't believe in conspiracies i don't think anybody's ever deliberately done anything because i don't think any human being is smart enough to do it i think systems are smarter at doing what systems do i think systems have are in the process of of completely like dissolving the father-son bond I think that, that like like that, that we regard much the same as that we go like, like oh those towers blew up like, who are those guys well they're a bunch of guys they could put funny things in their head they believe in God they oh, they think that God's gonna give them a snake when they die oh, they're fucking fuck. everybody go to Citibank and go to Toys R Us and just uh, play, play cool like wait we're we <laughs> things that are mythical and powerful and special that don't have anything to do with a dollar changing hands like the this system that is driven by dollars. Changing Changing hands is like, like jumping on it and corroding it, to, and, that, and that's why every prom night, every every son, you know, has a drunken fucking wrestling match with his dad on the kitchen floor because when he was thirteen, they didn't go out in the woods and, and get circumcised on a tree stump. <laughs> Your thoughts, Spencer's dad? <laughs> Just, just a couple thoughts about his birth, if I might. Um, and he'll probably kill me for this later, but since you brought up circumcision. Uh, the, uh, when, when he was born... Rock your buddy China! He, he was a, a really large baby, and uh, he came out, and this was my second child, he came out with, like... A beard. No. <laughs> A, a giant red testicles. I mean, <laughs> these things were like, like the size of your heart. They were the so size big. of my heart. Yeah, literally. Like, oh, how romantic! Which was a little bit worrisome, you know. Wait, um, you mean the size of an, an adult human heart? Yeah, no, they were they were like a softball. In, in, like a, like right. a I should point softball, out. You know, so most not, most not, people in the audience don't work in the testicle industry. <laughs> The human heart is a standard unit of measure for... Yeah. Uh, testicle, sorry. Your son has three heart testicles. Uh, You're saying that not each testicle was, was, was its own human heart. The entire unit of both yeah, testicles the whole sac was and everything. human heart. <laughs> so it was fist-sized. Yeah. So, um, but the other interesting thing about his birth was um, that, that's his pretty mom interesting. had a C-section. And so when you have another C-section, they don't want to cut as far. Um, because because of muscles and everything, so they don't cut as far as they did on the first C-section, and he was bigger than our first son, and so as a result, he was actually looking around in the world before he was technically born. His head was out of out of Diane's body. We got this great kind of science fiction alien baby shot. <laughs> and, and he's kind of just you know you got the blood. He just and looks all, like Quato from Total Recall. <laughs> 
And he's, he's just kind of looking around like, do I really want to come out? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think, as we know, you know, some 24 years later, the answer is he probably wished he had. Yeah, no, he, <laughs> he seems like a guy who, yeah, who considers all of this a, 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 a barely tolerable interruption. Exactly. <laughs> as he does his father, by the way. <laughs> well, let's talk about that, because, I, I mean, I, you, you, you seem like a delightful guy. Uh, um, uh, Spencer is clearly a delightful guy. Uh, but you're his father, and he's your son. So, like, 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 what? I mean, so, so, like, like, Spe- we're in the green room, and Spencer has that, like, he he has that Spencer face or Spencer lack of face on. <laughs> when, and you're 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 sitting there, and you're in your sneakers, and you're 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 you're, you're delighted to be here, and you're 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 funny. You're going like like I, I I'm trying. I, I want to ask Spencer like like is your dad is your is your bum that your dad's here? Is he does he is he embarrassing you? Because like d- kids get embarrassed by their parents by default. Doesn't matter how cool they are. Doesn't matter <laughs> like like. And I just uh, what's my question? I I just. Uh, <laughs> Like, 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 what is, uh, what is it? Like, okay, here's my question. I would, because in my wildest dreams, I would have a, if I would, were to have a son, I would, I would be so relieved if the doctors could show me some kind of chronological sonogram. I'd go, you're going to have a Spencer. You know, you're going <laughs> to, he's going to be. He's he's not he's not going to be doing pull-ups for a living. Uh, he's going to design dungeons. He's going to be very smart and fair and 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 honest and have a high IQ and like, uh, uh, like 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 I would be so much happier about that than if they said, well, Channing Tatum is going to come out and you know he'll be great. People are going to love him in this movie and. Uh, he'll be great at football, uh, but so so, and I, I I kind of get the vibe that you like you, you, you but but he's your son. So do, you, do is there frustration there? Do you? Well, well the hardest thing about Sp- Spencer is is it's hard to raise a child who's twice as smart as you. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, when he was like six or seven. He told us what he wanted to do for his birthday party. <laughs> and then he proceeded to organize all the kids. And, and he did like a, he got this little Casio keyboard and they wanted to play a version of musical chairs. And so I said, okay, let's start. He goes, no, dad. And he took it away from me and he's like organizing the kids and doing all this stuff. And, and uh, Nathan will sit over there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> The cake will be shaped like a skull, candles emerging from its eye sockets. Eight obelisks set aflame. <laughs> the power of my birth will be recognized. But he, but he kind of had a twisted sense of humor. Uh, we, we were, Don't worry about that. We were at the beach. He was in junior high and we were at the beach and he got on his mind he wanted to uh, catch a seagull. So this is in Mentura somewhere. So how do you catch a seagull? Well, like any animal, you set up some food. And so he told us what to do. Kind of half buried himself in sand and then put a towel over himself. <laughs> and then we, like the we had like Cheetos lined up about 10 feet away, leading to right on top of his chest. And, and then he waited and, and he was very patient. I mean, I would use a box. It sounds like he wanted to catch and terrify a seagull. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did. And, and, and I want to tell you, all of us humans, there's a reason we have uh, these brows here. Because he caught the seagull with the towel and wrapped it around. And the seagull went... And all Spencer could see is like the seagull's throat coming at his eye. And obviously, th- this protected his eye from getting pecked out, at which point you realize, as a parent, this probably wasn't the smartest thing <laughs> that you could do. But so he caught the seagull, and then, then, I don't know why, but he had some string, and he tied it to his foot, and then he kind of flew him around like a kite for the rest of the day. So. It's like that scene from Game of Thrones with a dragon. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Spencer Joffrey. Is it? Uh, then you give him a crossbow for his 16th birthday, and... 
so, I mean, so... I wait, mean, wait, wait, no, no, no. What happened to the seagull? <laughs> <laughs> well, we decided that uh, somebody might come along at a certain point and find us after some people were kind of pointing their fingers at us and right. stuff. And, I mean, do you just uh, let it go? and hit it? Yeah, it's yeah. still got a string attached to it to this day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, probably so. I mean, if you, <laughs> if you ask Spencer a question about anything, it doesn't matter if you're asking him about his relationship with his father or the economy or what we should do next week for D&D or how he's feeling or what he had for lunch. I mean, he's, he's kind of got that. He's staring off into space and talking like this. And uh, yeah, yeah, my dad's here. Um, and I, it's, it's like, like, have you ever? Do, do, uh, I, I, I just want like, is is it a thankless job? Like I was describing earlier. Like, like, do you feel like, hey, fuck you, man. Like, I'm your, I'm your dad. Like, 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 uh, like, 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 be a fan of mine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's somewhat thankless. Like, um, but it's hard because he's right in that wheelhouse age you're talking about, where you see, you start to see a transition. And, you know, I've been trying to get Spencer to uh, move on with his life for a while. Which he just has. He's just moved out. Yeah, yeah, like a month ago. I was, I've been trying for three years, but he thinks it's, <laughs> he thinks it's because I hate him. And, I, and I'm like, well, the, to me, the biggest value of college is that you're getting out of the house and, and, and learning to live on your own. And um, you know, so and he never he didn't go to college. He decided not to because, you know, he was well too lots, smart. Well, I a mean, lot smarter than all of his teachers. And, yeah, and, I, I I went to college. It's, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Yeah, yeah, and I went to college and got a degree. And I say it's not a, all it's yeah. cracked up to be. I, I, I dropped I dropped out. I started doing I was doing stand. Yeah, getting out of your parents' house was like the the thing that I needed to do was go smoke two packs of cigarettes a day and do stand up and and drink a lot like and I, like kind of fine it was like a like a roulette ball you just need to get the world spinning underneath you and you just gonna, you're gonna, just gonna land somewhere specific and it can't be your parents' house right uh, and, and it might you know who knows where it's gonna lead uh, well I th- I feel like we should bring we should get Spencer up here because we we need to uh, uh, protect me. That's a good looking crowd. (laughs) So, when did your balls. uh... Yeah, okay, I gotta clear something up real quick. When I was looking around uh, mid birth, I wasn't like, I'm not so sure I wanna come out here. I was like, hey, you guys, don't freak out. But Sir, my balls are huge. <laughs> I've been watching him for nine months. <laughs> I'm smart enough to know balls don't need to be this big. <laughs> they, they went back to normal, trust me. <laughs> I don't believe you. There's going to be this whole movement like, show us your scrotal certificate. <laughs> but yeah. Or just well, take your balls out. <laughs> I'm behind a table. <laughs> Is there anything like... Meaning they're uh, already out. <laughs> I've always had my suspicions. Yeah, Sp- yeah. Spence, Spencer has polyhedral balls. Yes. Uh, uh, 20, 20 sides.